Hey everyone, Jay here from Pistol Star again, and just like I promised in our introduction video on designing and implementing a secure web portal, I'm back to take a deeper look at one of those big five considerations I introduced you to in our first video. For this video, I'd like to dive a little bit deeper into the area of security considerations and how understanding what type of information your portal is going to present plays a huge role in determining what type of security capabilities you may want to consider employing. Building a sound approach to security really hinges on answering a few basic questions about your portal really, really well. And up on the screen here, you can see four of those questions that we think really are important. The first questions that you need to answer really relate to your user base and the content that you'd like to serve them. So you need to start to answer things like, is your portal truly a private one in which only pre-identified individuals will be given access? You could think of this maybe as an employee portal, for instance, where they can check in, see the latest company news and announcements, stock quotes, but they would also have links to their paycheck and benefit information, something that you would absolutely want to keep very, very secure. Or is this a public portal that you're presenting, one that serves up information that is readily available in the public domain without much consideration to who sees it or how they consume it? And lastly, is your portal kind of a hybrid of both? in that it offers both public and private information where you have a target audience that you want to interact with and give them the ability to see and do specific things. Up on the screen here, uh, you know, these are very common things to provide in a portal. Some of them that you would want to be secured, say email or access to Google Apps or Office 365 or even their 401k, and others that are readily available through the public domain. Stock quotes, the latest news, maybe a weather forecast, things of that nature. Many public facing portals fall into the hybrid category that I just described. This is where the users are presented multiple points of entry depending on their role in the organization. You could think of these points of entry as doors that direct traffic to specific areas of your portal and that are targeted to specific areas of interest. Many companies and educational institutions are starting to favor this approach. You know, in higher ed, for instance, many schools and universities present these entry doors to students, faculty, parents, and prospective students. Depending on the door they click leads them to a specific login procedure that opens up different elements of the portal. Some are highly secured and some are not as much. An enrolled student, in my example, would typically be authenticated through a school's Active Directory or other LDAP type repository and then required to authenticate using a one-time password. Once they've verified their identity, they are then given the ability to access things like their campus email, maybe their grades, class schedule, or their online applications, all of which should be highly secure. They would also be given access to some less secure information like campus announcements and upcoming events. This same portal can also give access to prospective students that don't currently have an established relationship with the college. In their case, they may be given access to information that is curated by the school. Things like class descriptions, syllabi, upcoming events, and other points of interest. For this portal experience, it is much less secure and the log information may be limited to capturing an email and contact information for future contact purposes. In my above example, you'll notice that a number of key security design questions have already addre been addressed depending on the user profile. You know, for students that are actively enrolled in the school, they are authenticating their identity against an established user repository, in this case Active Directory, and then opening up content based on their ID and user group. For non-students, they're directed to another area, each depending on who they are and who they identify themselves as. You know, the last thing we like to have you consider is how important it is to really understand how the user accesses and authenticates and what their end user experience is. So in instances where you're offering the user the ability to access secure information, let's say, or applications, you'll be more often than not find yourself relying on the ability to have single sign-on capability. To use my door analogy from earlier, enabling SSO is a great way to allow users to simply unlock the front door and then have full access to any room they want to go in. In practical application, this means once your users are authenticated via SSO, they'd have the ability to check email, log into their favorite web apps, and gain access to secure information. 
lots of things to consider with regards to security and how you're going to present your data to your end users. We're just scratching the surface here, but we'd like to leave you with this final thought. You know, security should never be an afterthought when you're integrating a portal into your environment. So that wraps up video number two in our six-part series around designing and implementing a secure web portal. We promise to be back shortly with video number three in the series, and that's where we're going to, you know, uh, cough, cough, uh, talk about compliance considerations, everybody's favorite topic. Well, this is Jay signing off. Thanks again for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you in video number three.